Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the process to swap out our inner and outer CV joint boots on our 2016 Yamaha YXZ 1000R. We're actually using part numbers as part of a kit and they come complete with the boots, the grease, everything that you're going to need to get these installed. Ours are actually in good shape, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the process how to replace both because once these get a rip in them, it's only a matter of time for dirt and or water to get inside that joint and destroy it. Now, if that happens, then you're going to have to replace the entire axle and I don't think you want to have to do that. Now, as far as the tools go, I will call those out as I go along, but there is one specialty tool that you'll need to pick up and that's a pair of pliers that actually crimp down on the bands that hold the boots in place. Well, let me go open up my toolbox, grab a couple of tools, and we'll dive into this project. All right, guys, let's get started. First thing we want to do is take off the axle nut, and that is a 32 millimeter. I'm using an air impact, but if you don't have one, have somebody hold the brakes, and that should be enough to break it loose. We're going to go ahead and pull off the brake caliper assembly just at the bracket itself. The brake caliper bracket is held in by a 14 millimeter bolt. One up here at the top, another one down at the bottom. What we're going to do next is just take off this one bracket and then we're going to bring up the caliper and just zip tie it to that front bracket. There we go. Next, let's get the steering ball joint off or control arm, whatever you want to call it. Should be a cotter pin down here. And the castle nut is a 19 millimeter, and then there will be a washer up under that. Make sure you don't misplace it. Unscrew the castle nut to where it's even with the bottom of the joint. Then we're going to get a soft blow hammer, tap it, hopefully that'll knock it out of the, the knuckle. But don't remove it until we do that, because sometimes a soft blow will not do it. We may have to go with the regular steel one, as I was saying. Did that get it? Yep, it did. Good way to keep this together. Go ahead and put the washer and the castle nut on the end of it. One, you won't lose it. Two, lessens the risk of damaging it. Now let's go ahead and get this cotter pin out of the way. Get that lower castle nut removed. Yeah. All right, let's stop there. Let's go ahead and take off the lower shock mount. That's a 14 on one side and a 17 nut on the other. Make life a little bit easier, getting creative with a couple of bungee cords to hold the shock up out of the way. What I'm going to do is I've got another nut with the same thread pitch and diameter. I'm going to put it on the end of it and then I can hit this with a hammer. Otherwise I'd be marring the edges of the castle nut because it's going to take a little bit more than just a gentle tap to break this loose. What I'm doing here is just lifting it up and putting on a jack stand. That way I have more distance. I can swing the hammer to hit the nut and hopefully this will give me enough distance where I can hit it hard enough to shock it loose out of the hub itself. I think that finally got it. <laughs> I've deformed it to the point the uh, socket won't go on it anymore. Now you see why I put a different nut on there. Had I used a harder metal, it wouldn't have deformed so easily. Probably wouldn't have been a problem, but I didn't. So we're going to try to use the impact to get that nut off. A castle nut would not have survived this, but it's clear now. Now let's get this out of the way. See if we can get this to pull through the hub. There we go. Now, 
Let's hold the whole shooting match up so we can get that axle out. There we go. Well, she's out. Let's head over to the teardown bench and I'll walk you through getting these replaced. I wanted to show you the different pliers that you're going to need because Yamaha actually used two different style bands. One for the inside, one for the outside. And you're going to need both types of pliers to actually get those clamps in place. This type you actually can squeeze together and if you do it correctly, when I take it off, I could actually reuse it. The other side actually compresses it together and pushes it down and you'll need this type of plier to do it. So between these two, we can get the whole project done. So let's go ahead and get this mounted up in the vise and we'll start pulling it apart. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. My favorite way is just to grab and just start twisting and she will break loose like that. Now the other end, we can grab right here compress it together, and then lift off this end to get it to release. Not quite as violent as the other end, huh? Here's where you're going to want to get the gloves on. Let's go ahead and break the seal loose. Now here's where you want to pay careful attention. Depending on how long your boot has been ripped, that will determine how much trash and water and dirt and debris have made its way in there. And if this is not very fluid feeling, you are just postponing the inevitable and you either need to go and replace the whole joint now or the whole axle, really up to you. But of course mine was not ripped yet. So this joint should be in good shape. You do want to, however, get out as much of the old grease as possible because they actually send you new grease in the kit. We're going to be using a punch and a hammer and the part that we want to hit is right inside of here. You do not want to hit this outer part of the bearing or this outer edge because you're in the risk of actually driving it all the way off and then the bearings go flying everywhere and you've made a mess. Or if you hit this section it is very brittle and it will actually shatter. So have to be careful in here. So we're going to use a chisel but one with a fairly blunt edge because we're going to put it right in here and then hit it with our hammer. Yep, see it already popped it loose because there's a little snap ring that's actually holding it here and what we're doing as we force it out it is compressing it in and then that will allow us to go ahead and tap it off of there. But that first hit is what matters. So now it's already decompressed and we should be able to just tap it easily and get it the rest of the way off. There we go. There's that ring I was talking about. And they actually send you a new one in the kit. Now this side we don't need to remove, we just take it out of the vise, take the boot all the way off, and we'll get the new one pushed on there. These had not failed yet, but I can tell you it was getting close. They are not very pliable, especially that one. Everything's apart, cleaned up fairly well. Let's go ahead and start getting our boots back on, get it filled up with grease. it up over that edge. There we go. Same thing. See that little edge right there you need to get it up over where it rises up. You need to get it over that where it gets into that groove. Now let's go ahead and at least get this into position so we can go ahead and clamp it down in our vise. Very important. Go ahead and get your small clamp on first. Then our boot. And now we're going to put on our new little snap ring. Okay, well we've got it all the way off. Let's put a little grease straight down into here. That way it'll force it on the back side or the inside of the bearing and force some of that new grease in. 
when we go to put the shaft on. All right, to get this one on, you may have to guide in that little clip just a tick to get it in the edge like that. All right, she's bottomed out. Now, finished getting some grease in there. And we want to keep it off the outside because we want it to get a clean clamp onto the, the boot edge. And what we're gonna do is grab it in between here and here, pull the clamp together, and then this section will grab down on these two teeth. That's it. Same thing for the outside. Now we're grabbing it here and here, pulling it together, and then getting those teeth to engage. That's it. And now we'll switch up pliers and squeeze these into position, because what this does is it pulls it in and pushes it down at the same time. All there is to it. That's it. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Let's go ahead and get it reinstalled. And if you're really paying attention, you'll notice that the shock had been removed. There were several other videos that we did concerning the ball joints and the bearings and the seals that uh, necessitated it being removed. I'm going to, of course, reinstall it when we finish up, but you probably didn't have to pull it all the way off the machine just to do your axle. Let's hold this up. There it is. Now, put a little bit more grease on the end of our half shaft so it doesn't wear out those inner seals. And in the event we ever have to replace the bearings on this, it'll come out and not be frozen. There. Starting to come together, guys. Starting to come together. Down here, we needed to, to set in place. Go ahead and get this castle nut started. Then we're going to bring it up, put some pressure on this where it's pushing it up in there. See if that's got enough pressure to hold it. Got it. Go ahead and do 51 on that one. Then go ahead and get out our cotter pins. All right, doesn't quite line up on that hole, so we're gonna move it just a little bit more. That should do it. That's it. Now we can go ahead and remount the shock. It's a 17 on the nut side and a 14 on the bolt side. 47 coming up. One more time down here. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and torque down the tie rod bolt. 29 foot pounds on this. There we go. And it does have a cotter pin. And let's go ahead and get our, our shield back on. And it's just held in with three four millimeter Allens. Next, let's put some grease inside of our hub on the splines and also on the surface area right here so it doesn't destroy that seal too quickly. Keep the grease off the brake disc though. We'll go ahead and put this on just hand tight. All right guys, we're getting ready to torque down this bolt and it takes 268 pounds and there's no way the braking system can hold it by itself. So there's only two ways I know of, either A, to put a breaker bar through here and let it go against the ground, which is what we're gonna do, or you can finish putting the machine together, take out that center cap, lower it down with the wheel in place, and then you can get the torque on it. But we're gonna use a breaker bar to get this done. And actually my torque wrench only goes to 260, but we're gonna call that good go till it clicks and then flex it just a little bit more to 
to get those last eight in there. So now we're going to just stake it in place. There we go. We are getting close. We're down to the caliper now. Get these bottomed out and then we'll torque them to 35 foot pounds. One left to do. Well, all right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. The only thing I have left to do now, or you have left to do now, is just to remount the tire and wheel. But as you can see, I still have a lot more work to do, so we're not going to worry about that right now. Well, listen, if you need these parts for your machine or anything else, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Parkzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.